Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks to another live session of Dev Talks with Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar. Sir, thank you so much for joining. The topic for the day, as some of you might know, is China is heading into a crisis. There's drought. Let's not talk about the economy. There is COVID, and let me just funnily say there is China itself. <laughs> Uh, sir, thank you so much. I think it's a broad subject that we are trying to get into, but I think uh, it's a very important thing because the Chinese seem to be going into a certain ditch, which is, uh, you know, to a certain extent they can't even help. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, Adi. Good evening to all the viewers. Uh, at the outset, let us let me tell you that Adi and I were not actually contemplating discussing China today. But then I told them, look, let's discuss China because there's something very, in my view, there's something very uh, important happening, and it's going to have uh, long-range uh, repercussions. And you know, I thought, let me keep tracking because I'm going to write an article on it and all that. But you know, come up front and say, and get a view from all of you also. Uh, what bounces my ideas off yours? So my suggestion and my request to you is, keep the questions to China and you know what we are talking of relevant to the topic. Maybe reference to India, but let's not go into the war and you know those situations. Those are hackneyed kind of things. There's something very important which is happening. It affects India. There's no doubt about it. But we have to be careful about it. Careful. All right, and we need to know what we're going to do because this is going to. And uh, look, uh, I'm only paying off first others will catch up slowly so you might have different ideas that's okay we'll see fair enough so i think uh, you know it's a it's such an interesting subject actually, actually there was a comment that was put on to uh, twitter when i had put this thing out uh, it spoke about the issues that india can face and it you know drought, droughts in china should be a concern for us in particular as they've been trying hard to subvert the flow of rivers from Tibet to the inner regions. Yeah, we'll talk of this. So Let the question come up. We'll talk, of, yeah, the we'll talk of this. Itself. Yeah, we'll talk of this also. It's a, a pretty important and we'll probably have so, a discussion. So you want to dig into a couple of slides that you've Yeah, I'll do that. Like, you know, it'll be... No, no. We'll uh, put the slide on. Uh, right. Kind and, of... uh, yeah, we'll put the slide on and then we'll explain the situation. And... Uh, Yeah, put the slide on. Right, what we'll do is we'll go over the current situation and drought in China because many of us uh, don't know China. I mean, let me be very honest. Uh, everyone says China. China is not like Chennai or Delhi, one small town. It's a huge country. And we don't even know uh, the various parts of uh, China. Okay, so have a look at this. If you see to the center of the slide, you see on dark red portion, that's the southern China, Chongqing, you know, and uh, to the right, it's all red. You see in the eastern part of the India, also, where it is, uh, you, you you see it's light orange, but whereas uh, China, it's all red. Okay, the southern part. Now, one second, I didn't catch that. Could you try again? Now, the point is that this part of China is under drought. This is a heat map of China as of today. It is about two hours back through Windy, which I captured and put it. To give you an idea as to where we are. And the figures which are given below each city are the temperatures prevalent, uh, which were prevalent say an hour or two back. It's uh, almost live. So, it, okay, now this is the area, the red area which is the most broad pond and you see it goes all the way to the east coast okay we'll now this is the yangtze river on the top right which is flowing in multiple streams i don't know which city it is uh, and the left one shows the efforts chinese are taking to transfer water from one channel to the other multiple pipes this that xyz they're in a bad situation the day you have to transfer water from one channel to the other through pipes like this, you can see about 20 odd pipes, then you know they're in real trouble. Okay. Anyone? 
Okay, to give you a broad idea, uh, if you have a look at this, it gives you the you know fundamental four major rivers of uh, China. You see near Hong Kong, Hong Kong and Yunnan, that lowermost river is called the Pearl River. Above that is the Yangtze. It, I've learned it as the Yangtze Kiang right from young days. It starts somewhere in you know, Tibet and comes down, winds down towards Yunnan, then goes to Hubei. It cuts through Sichuan, of course, and ends up at Shanghai. Shanghai is the mouth of the thing. And the point is that if you see the course of this river, go back from Shanghai, Shanghai, Anhui, right. Hubei, Sichuan, all these provinces, the major provinces of uh, China are on Yangtze. The major industrial provinces of Yang, uh, uh, you know, China are here. And Yangtze Kiang is one of the longest rivers in the world. And it is a navigable river. It is used for inland water transportation, at least the middle part and down south. Yuhan, Wuhan is somewhere in the center. Hmm. The northern river is the Yellow River, which goes from Qinghai, goes to Ningxia, goes to you know, Shangxi, it loops around, comes back, and then you know, south of Beijing, uh, Beijing, it ends up in Tianjin. That's also called the Yellow River or the Sorrow of China. Sorrow of China. Okay, Huangyi. And uh, these three are the main rivers which go into mainland China. Of course, in Tibet, you see the line that's at Brahmaputra. But for this discussion, we don't need that. Okay. So, the major rivers are this. And we are now talking of Yangtze. Yangtze is the one which is under... Uh, the entire basin is under drought. Okay. Now... Uh, Let's look at this map. It gives you a slightly greater detail of the Yangtze River. You see the Yangtze River, where this town Changsha is. Either side of that, you see two blue dots. The dot to the right is Lake Poyang, and the dot to the left is Lake da Daunting. These are huge lakes. For example, Poyang covers an area of 5,500 square kilometers. Ooh. Today, yeah, it, today it is under 700 kilometers, square kilometers. It has shrunk to under 700 square kilometers. Okay. So, that is the effect. Dongting is almost dry as of today. Okay. Okay. This is the, you know, channels in which this Poyang is. Poyang is almost dry. It's a tree-like structure. If you see Ulta, it's like a tree. Right? This is what has emerged. And uh, some of these are made channels. Channels have been made to ensure water flows from wherever it is into the fields and all that. Uh, yeah, this is another illustrative figure. On the right is the Dongting Lake, which is the light blue one is a full. You know, The Dongting Lake is fed by a lot of small rivers. Uh, it is supposed to be that much. You see the left, the water left in that lake, thin strips. That's the seriousness of the effect. Now, what I want you to understand is this. Let's go back to the the uh, the hottest part is Chongqing, which is at the base of the foothills, and the driest part is there. Water is not coming in. But where is the effect of being felt? Effect is being felt at Lake Poyang and Dongting. You see where Chongqing is in this? And where Poyang... So that means entire belt of Yangtze is in pain. Okay. This is the Three Gorges Dam. Now the Three Gorges Dam in flood it was releasing water like this. Today the Three Gorges Dam on the right looks like this. There is no water. There is no water to release from the Three Gorges Dam. As per the reports, it, it might have reached the dead water level. Dead water level is the level from which you can't drain water out of the dam. Hmm. Okay. That, that's very serious. You also have to understand, two years back, this is an important fact. Two years back, same time, August 15th, 20th, 30th, uh, this peak month, every day I used to surf the net. I used to surf uh, the Twitter and see... What's the state of the Three Gorges Dam? Because that dam was almost 
the lake was full water was to overflow and the, it, people felt that this could be breached in a time the same dam today in the same period is going through a drought no water okay now drought has not occurred only in china it has occurred in entire uh, northern hemisphere large parts of usa are under drought and flood simultaneously uh, <coughs> france germany portugal you know spain all these places are under drought even the european rivers which were navigable rivers deep rivers are all drying out so there's something very funny happening you might call it climatic climate change you might call it uh, weather variability or freak phenomenon call it what you want it doesn't affect the fact is that this has happened drought unprecedented drought in europe which has not happened for the past 500 years unprecedented drought in china which has not happened till from 1951 from when records have been kept that is the thing northern hemisphere has hit, hit very badly we have escaped it in india we had this problem when the wheat crop was you know uh, ripening extreme heat in april may uh, has um, stymied your wheat crop wheat crop which is supposed to be about normally 110 to 120 million tons it has come down to about i think 108 to 102 but that's a different story we have escaped the problem okay to a large extent so this is the overview of the yeah we can take the slide off this is overview of the chinese drought situation but we are not interested in the drought situation i am not i am not bothered whether china drives in drought or not i am more interested in the geopolitical issues how will it affect the world how will it affect china how will it, it affect us that's the more important thing not that i'm inhuman about what's happening in china but the fact is today's discussion is something else we can discuss the human fact of china and all that later okay let i will put it in two little things first we'll discuss the drought itself and the effects of this drought on the chinese economy and the outlook and then we'll see the chinese economy and the follow up the interplay we've already said yangtze basin as its lowest lakes are dried up we've seen what has it happened the crops which are supposed to ripen in say in a month or two or get sold in a month or two will get hit there's no doubt there so there's going to be a downward pressure on its uh, food security hmm. china has enough stocks no problem they'll buy they got money they'll buy but even if you lose 20% of your crop which is the, what people are expecting it's bad 20 people is conservative or 20% is conservative it could be more electricity L- lot of china's electricity is based on hydropower and all this hydropower in the south and the southern part of china is dependent on hydroelectricity and that has failed you are talking of almost half the area of china which is today under drought Oof. and the most productive part of china wuhan anhui uh, shang hai sichuan under drought lot of uh, sichuan is a, was used to be a backward area the chinese have offered a um, lot of incentives for people to come to sichuan that is around changping to set up new factories they all fought <laughs> china has a very funny thing the south has lot of water the north is normally arid droughts occur more in the north and floods occur in the south that's the thing but this year the ulta has happened it happens it's not that it's not happened before this entire belt was under major drought say in 2006 at that time people said this is the worst drought in 50 years now they are saying this is the worst drought ever since we know so this must be very bad compared to that okay so 
so the the drought is taking place at a place when chi where china is supposed to be water surplus <laughs> and floods are taking place at a place where water is not there not there okay yeah, why am i telling you this chinese uh you know idea or you know their big idea is to transfer water from the south to the north right you let give me one minute i'll be back right you, uh, just carry on abhi i'll get back yeah as a matter of fact uh, guys you know uh, unforeseen circumstance right there but anyways uh, i think abhay is supposed is going to be asking this question and i'll put it up uh, when we talk about the movement of the you know chinese water from one part of the other but the most important question that we need to ask at this point of time is that will china be able to sustain itself what is happening in their cities is going to take a toll with regards to their livelihoods today uh, i am sure a lot of you who are on twitter can see videos of these rivers and stuff like that that jan shankar has just shown but the main uh, challenge that will come in is with regards the food supplies is with regards as sir said food supplies they've got certain amount but of course it's going to be quite a big challenge for the chinese to handle something like this electricity is becoming a big problem chinese produce a lot of electricity through water so yeah so we were talking of this south north transfer of water yeah. actually as a matter of fact one of our viewers abhay has asked a question which is pretty much similar so i'll just put it up on the screen he says yeah, we'll talk of this we'll yeah. talk of this so they're talking of south to north transfer of water they already they uh, as part of this you know economic recovery they're planning to have a canal from three gorges dam to the north hmm. it is supposed to be over 1200 1300 kilometers long it's something like as big as indira gandhi canal maybe more and they're going to spend a phenomenal amount at many places it's going to go underground and come out that kind of a story uh, chinese how they do it now that whole thing is at risk what is the use of making a canal say 1000 2000 3000 kilometers long and you get it hit in a drought and you don't have water to transfer so the whole thing will flop so their infrastructure plans are at risk now tibet tibet will have water i mean uh, will have water but then yeah, let us see how they can do it they they're going to have a lot of problems with their long term thing and how much money they'll have to uh, you know spend for this so far the river transfer water transfer from tibet to the north is still an airy-fairy thing so i don't think we should worry the fact that they going want to do it is there but will they be able to do it after this event i don't know whether they will even try it okay and that's why i said this has got a major impact on the chinese way of thinking drought because that for the first time their uh, crops are going to get hit industry is packed up inland water transport is packed up okay i'll come to the i'll come to the economics a little later but let me continue with this now hydroelectricity is packed up so what is their alternate they're going to ramp up coal what will coal do it will pollute that area <laughs> coal will pollute that area even more so and china is one of the, let's be very frank because of it the way its industry has grown and it is one of the most polluted areas country hmm. so that's going to go up but then you have to realize coal thermal nuclear x y z whatever you do you need water to produce electricity you need water in coal mines to even extract coal hmm so without water what are they going to do and china is already a polluted country and it is almost a acutely water deficient country so this business of coal all this look this drought has brought out a lot of uh, vulnerabilities of china the way i look at it so they are in a mess 
these are all open questions i don't have solutions for it i don't i don't know whether chinese themselves have solutions for it then the, of course the larger issue of industrialization like i said they they brought a lot of industry into sichuan where will that industry go who will put money there if tomorrow something similar happens okay so no one will invest so this event might lead people not to invest okay now we spoke of that northern hemisphere effect you look at the macro picture today china's economy we all know which we have been discussing uh, dual circulation dual circulation is what lot of consumption we have discussed before that consumption is not taking place it's gone down industrialization because of all this will go down their only one route is export they have to export mind you if they don't export today china's economy will collapse but who'll buy if northern europe all the rich countries of europe are going to go into a recession who'll buy chinese items they'll buy only those minimal items okay and then they'll not have spare money to give it to the chinese or for any this thing all of all economies in europe are going to tighten their belt for the oncoming recession remember europe is in a mess because of the russian gas or lack of russian gas lack of energy and they're heading into winter even china is heading into winter but that's a different story but they're heading into winter where they need more electricity they need more energy which they don't have and this uh, floods and water yeah wo everything so who the buyers for china so what are you going to do if you think after this and if you remember march april may uh, uh, april quarter their economy almost tanked mm-hmm. came down to only 0.4% after that in june july their economic indicators are bad they are bad in a huh they are talking about a recession they are talking about no forget i mean let's forget about what they are talking let's deduce it we got brains enough so their economy is gone bad their indicators are bad okay and what has happened china has gone into two rate cuts within a matter of 10 days when do you do a rate cut when you want to make lending easy i mean fundamentally you are reducing the interest rates you are dis you know if i have to put money in a bank and earn interest i have a rate cut the interest rate fall i am not prepared to put my money in the bank i will go and spend it if i don't have money this is the best time for me to uh, uh, borrow money because the interest is low and do investment these are the, this is the thinking twice in almost 10 days china has had a rate cut which is not had for a long time i don't know when it la- last had a rate cut okay property problem has not decreased that the property issues the china said they'll bail out the customers pay ye wo all that the customers i read a report uh, last week not even last week 3 days back that the customers have not seen money they have given been given one small installment they have said okay we'll do something but so people that mortgage thing is on still all debt fueled infrastructure with their building like i told you like mm-hmm. these fast trains bullet trains no one is there to travel today's bullet trains occupancy is less than 25 30% except for a few major routes the rest of the t- routes are gone down so and these guys want to add more they their major infrastructure is what bullet trains canals roads which they don't need and all this is going to come through debt so if all this is going to come through debt where will they get money from it so it might it's a major issue mm. okay xi jinping is still politically oriented just imagine this think of course B- bri is a write off 
that we know we, right we all said we are today's news was we are, uh, china will forgive loans of african countries they have no choice if you don't forgive the loan anyway, the chap will not give money back. What is the Prem Chodra's dialogue? What will you do with Nange? What will you do? So you, so you grain geopolitical point by saying we'll write off the loans. That's the latest. I saw it about half an hour back. You see their military spending. They're saying we are making stealth radars. Some guest navy. X, Y, Z, they're spending non-productive expenditure. Aging. You think after all this drought, whatever is going to happen and all, people are going to produce children? Will you produce children? Let me ask you a question. Or if you're old, will you, you, will you encourage your child, children to produce grandchildren? Where's the money, sir? Where's the money? There are no jobs. Jobs, job losses are at unprecedented high in China today. So all this is going to become more problematic. Then the mega problem of COVID, it has not gone anywhere. It is there. Okay. And they've got another new problem. So uh, my view is this economy is going to tank. I mean, then let's not have any doubt. We want to contract. Yeah, people will say it will be increased by 2%, 3% and they'll Poodle fake figures. There's another funny thing which I read today. One bank is lending to the other bank and repaying it back. Why, sir? I sent you that report about uh, yeah. China stopping the currency outflow. Then one is currency outflow. The other thing is this is very funny. They call a chap and say, okay, take a loan at some X percent interest. That guy after two days can come back and deposit that money in as a deposit at the same percent. <laughs> so, yeah, this is dual circulation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bada, huh? it's uh, honest, yeah? yeah, it's not funny. I'll show you a report. So, you call, I mean, you call a guy, usko paisa de do, yellow loan, 2% or 3% jo bhi hai. Kal ke den usi se deposit le lo, 2 or 3% ke liye. So, dual circulation hai So, this is where China's economy is. So where does it lead all of us? Where does it lead China? With this, this drought has not yet played out. There's also a saying in China. I mean, this is, this saying is not mine. It's Chinese saying. I don't know the Chinese part. I'll tell you the English uh, translation. They say in China, droughts are followed by floods. If that happens, there'll be heavy flooding in the next three months. Yeah, I mean, there was a there was a report that was coming out which was talking about the fact that you can see the Buddha's feet. You know, that, mm. that, that I, I forget the name of that place where the yeah. uh, there's giant Buddha statues there. And people have not seen the feet and the below structure for hundreds of years. No, they've and seen it. No, they've seen Nein, it. That's the level of the drought. But they say that... Uh, in China, whenever there's a drought, it is followed by a flood, which causes as much uh, misery as the drought. So that is also on the cards. So that is where China is today. And if you think after all this, he's going to, you know, his economy is going to go up by 80, 90% or whatever that you think. Or his GDP is going to overtake USA's. Then we are living in a bit of a fool's paradise. The question is, what does India do? There are three, four issues which uh, bear discussion or we, we need to think of. One is, we've escaped the wrath of climate change or weather variability, call it what do you want for this year. But we are just around the corner. Yeah. It's not far away. Plus, we want to industrialize, yay, wo. Do we need a rethink? Do you want to become another China and get polluted? Or do you want an alternate model of development? You have to think. Then this is the golden opportunity for you. How do you uh, become Atmanirbhartha? Atmanirbhartha is no more uh, 
uh, you know watchword <clears throat> it is now a mandatory thing if you're not going to be atmanirbhar you're going to be in misery okay one is you might not get anything from china and the inflation from china might be so high if the see if there's a, there's a other thing if the production has stopped and xyz has happened and all your primary components and apis and sources from china don't give you anything whatever is available that it's going to skyrocket so if you do not in, in invest into being atmanirbhar truly you're going to suffer i'm not interested what's happening in china i couldn't care a damn how does it impact us how does it affect us absolutely absolutely and then remember this classic thing that whenever china has been in problems it has externalized it happened in 62 so do we expect trouble from china already there are indicators okay let me uh, throw a spanner on this whole thing is this nancy pelosi's visit so innocent you think the americans didn't know there was a drought building up you and i didn't know because we don't have a telescope over china mm. but the americans know it very fully well they used to monitor wheat growth in russia or ussr at the height of cold war they used to know whether this is you know i read a book i remember uh, i don't remember which book, uh, who was the author but it was a famous author one of the reasons for america to go uh, aggressive against ussr was they found one one year that the uh, snow was melting faster in russia than it supposed to which meant that the wheat corn uh, years of the wheat or this dana didn't form as good because that the that uh, particular crop grows well only when there's adequate cold and and covered by snow frost a little bit yeah. frost. so that melted it once it melted it opened the that corn cobs or the wheat cob uh, wheat years to intense cold and they dried out and there was almost a famine like condition in russia so us guys quickly bloody cornered the market and bought the wheat out of the rest of the world and then bargained with russia and ba- russia you know economically got hammered let me ask you this question and let me leave this has usa done this again with nancy pelosi's trip and drawn xi jinping ji that yeah fully capable so today russia china is concentrating on taiwan paiwan and all that nonsense with a drought behind that it it is you know jumping all around the countryside i'll do this i'll do this now it's coming out they can do nothing so <laughs> this is where we are interesting uh, yeah no guys uh, you know we'll we'll head into the question i have a small question for you sir but after that i'm going to head into the questions guys please start shooting your questions i have some here i'll appreciate a lot more coming in and of course yes do hit the like button very very critical for my show to reach more and more people uh you know just like uh, kamal here says awesome job i wish more and more people uh, start watching your shows for that please hit the like button that's very critical and uh, of course if you've not subscribed to the channel do that and if you can also contribute to the dev talk uh you know efforts with upi becoming a member or just plain and simple clicking thanks thank you all for joining us uh so you know my main question to you about this entire game the chinese have been committed to a certain expense right uh the people are steady with a certain lifestyle and that is i think one of the questions everybody asks what is the limit that the chinese will accept this uh we see issues happening in europe already with this whole thing i mean we see as a matter of fact today there was a poll i was reading less than 50% of americans are now supporting the war in ukraine which was at about 90 at one time so as in when personal issues come in and this whole pressure builds up of course thought processes change 
how long do you think the chinese people will sustain this oh you see if it is an open up let me i'm sorry let me make it clear i am not advocating a break up of china or anything like that but yeah yeah i understand uh, I mean, completely we are not looking at that we'll see how yeah. what will be what will be the effect on china that's a larger question the point is this in an open economy where everything no, is known to everyone <clears throat> okay uh anything can happen governments can change governments can fall uh, all this in a closed economy like in china where information is controlled the all people uh, might not know the true extent of the problem those people who are affected might know but might not be able to communicate it to others so that build up of anger might not happen and if it happens the chinese will come down heavily through the pla yeah, or their auxiliary forces and break it up like they did up. with that uh, banking. And, uh, banking strikes uh, but the fact is that uh, there is going to be an effect whether that effect that ma- unrest within the society uh, will reach a critical mass like it happened in sri lanka where they'll over turn the communists is a big task and remember that pla is fully in the pocket of the communist party and the communist party controls everything okay so uh, i leave it at that it's a little if he but who knows how people will react if uh, so yeah, much things happen sir ha uh, yeah yeah see re- revolutions have happened for less far less for lesser uh, things absolutely yeah yes. lesser things and you know i have written earlier about the chernobyl factor which is coming what broke ussr it the Ch- chernobyl broke ussr chernobyl exposed the ussr system to their own public and events after that one by one one by one one by one it took 5 years for that effect to happen and after 5 years ussr vanished my theory always has been that the wuhan virus is the <laughs> chernobyl of china yeah. absolutely there is hardly an argument against that sir that but if you look at it five we are only 2 years down the line 2 years 2 and 1/2 years down the line already china from being counted as a superpower whose time has come x y z 2 years back that's what we were talking of at this time 2 years back we were talking of will they go back from maladak that's a superpower hegemony assertiveness aggressiveness wolf warrior that was the talk a stricken uh, usa a declining usa uh, this is what the talk was 2 years later where, where are we we you and i spoke the same language then also but people said nahi yaar ye to bewakoof hai abhi hum gyani ban gaye okay so <laughs> sir gyani sahab fir kuch questions start karte hain sir yeah let's do that right is it possible to harness water and this was an interesting question that that actually is obviously transfer of water uh from tibet to mainland china and such a vast population look uh they have done that earlier they have tried it earlier uh, it's a complicated thing it it might not be a 10 year project it might be a 20 year project it's on the radar personally i don't think it's feasible okay it's not feasible if this uh, the brahmaputra doesn't have that kind of water that side of uh, the himalayas to sustain such a vast population so let's not uh, i mean and moreover like i said after this particular event they will have their own problems of thinking like this this is an interesting question chinese out of desperation yeah. are looking for artificial rain there was a news article that was yeah i agree about- see uh, let me let me uh, put things in perspective what this whole story is what happens is you when there are clouds dry clouds you put silver iodide in the clouds 
it's called rainwater feed uh, silver iodide mm -hmm. feeding mm -hmm. you can put it by uh, flying choppers in it or uh, not choppers uh, aircraft or you f you fire rockets into the cloud right and spray silver iodide and get water down uh, it's got a reasonable rate of success but then how much you need a cloud to form for, for cloud seeding to be done okay and it's a one time affair if the cloud comes the burst happens and water comes and it goes off that's the end of the story and by the way that did happen in dubai they had a no. couple of days of heavy rainfall and they ended up flooding after that yeah they it's gone yeah. uh, after that what and you don't know what will be the other effects in this kind of a extreme situation so we don't know so this is a iffy thing the chinese have been doing it mind you let's be very yeah, this thing they they have quite good expertise in doing this but how much will they be doing will they will it give a full relief for them no will it induce a monsoon no it might give partial relief right in certain areas in certain areas so this is uh, it's like sticking a bandaid on a gunshot wound if you don't have anything else the bandaid is good one of the most interesting thing that came out of this sir, is that the shandong province basically sitting without light for it was for 6 days first now it has been extended to 11 yeah what do you do they don't have and that's the main manufacturer this, of the iPhones, by the way, if I'm... Yeah, this, yeah. this entire area is full of uh, hydropower dams. And yeah. there's no water in those dams. They don't have electricity. They can't get electricity. Their main grid is not uh, tuned to get electricity from north to south. Whatever they try, they can't get electricity today. Can you imagine a whole province out of light for 11 yeah, days? Yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, just imagine. Wrong. Yesterday there was no light in my house for three hours, and I felt uh, miserable. I know. Last time we were doing a live and all that stuff, it was yeah. like an un unforeseen thing that there was no light. You know, it was. Hey, but I must tell. I must tell all our viewers. I am very proud of being in India because I suddenly the light went off, and you know we were in a little bit of a mess. And but uh, you know I got a SMS. The light gone off due to feeder problem in your area. And, you know, wait, one hour, light will come back and light came back in 50 minutes. And look at the population and, in India. And, and India mein hota hi hai. Aisi baat nahi hai. Ki, uh, sab chalta hai. We don't know what's happening. I'm talking of India. I'm living in India. It happened with me. And in China, I don't know, the SMS will say, okay, we'll look for power after two weeks. So, so those of us who think, you know, China is the ultimate dream of progress and all that, you see what's happening. It's not... It's better. Exactly. It's better to move slowly. Indeed. Uh, the next question says: Looking at China, India should hasten its progress of using new technologies in agriculture to promote better and more efficient use of water. Hope Israel Agri Tech deal helps us out in the same. Comment, sir. Yeah, I agree with you. We need to use more technology. Right. The technology doesn't mean you use, you know, genetically modified seeds and all that only. There are other technologies to harness water, to use uh, better crops, water resistance, uh, pest resistant crops. Those things we can uh, get into. Um, they have a lot of technology which Israel uses. We need to leverage it. But at the same time, we need to remember Israel is a small country. You can do it, but not in a big country like us. Like us. Where uh, the, the, the kind of rice you grow in one district varies from the other district. And the technology you use in one district varies in the other district. The rain patterns in you know different areas are different. Or variability of weather, temperature, climate, the water availability, ground, soil conditions is hugely different you see the kind of wheat which is growing grown in mandya pradesh to the kind of wheat which is grown in punjab or the wheat grown in, in say rajasthan and is different 
So let's not use this as a you know wide wide spectrum antibiotic. Let us approach it case by case, but we need to do it. Indeed, very. Uh, I think uh, it's it's a it's a very important thing looking at the you know shortages around the world today, sir. Human life related atrocities won't break China, and COVID situation there sounds more like a mass public control strategy. While aggression from China, both covert and overt, is real, how do we counter it? Yeah, that's a very fair question. But my only one line answer, if you say, how do you counter it? Make yourself internally strong. You know what's happening, going to happen in China. From what we said, we know, I mean, let China do what it wants. China is going to decline. On that, I have today no doubts about it. The decline will be slow. I have no doubts about it. You will get imports from China will become costlier in days to come. It will become, I have no doubts about it. So, Atmanirbharta from being a slogan has to turn into a reality. Reality. And Atmanirbharta is not for export. Atmanirbharta is for you because you are in a problem today. More than that, you have to look at your water stress. How do you do river sharing, water sharing, water technologies? Invest in them. How do you solve your own energy problem? How do you solve your pollution problem? Because these are the places where if you solve these problems innovatively and seriously, that's the best way to counter China. And do we have do we have the capability to do so? I think so. Do you have the will to do so? If you don't have, the consequences are going to be grave. It doesn't matter whether China counters you or not. You might be at odds with Europe also tomorrow. In a in a period of recession and deglobalization, everyone is on his own. So we have to do what is good for us. I think that's a very, very interesting thing that you've said. You have to be on your own because that's what we see happening in the world today. Yeah, yeah. It's a I mean anybody's game. And it's an opportunity. Absolutely. You, you, you. I mean, I, I'll put it again, again, and again, and again. I'll get back to those. The thing which I have been propagating. We need to think of strategic independence. I've given a five-point framework to attain strategic independence. It depends on energy. It depends on water. Depends on health industry. It depends on defense industry. It depends on IT. These are your five strengths. If you don't leverage them now, we deserve to be where we are. Strong words, sir. I think yeah, I think I it's agree. a lot. Of Absolutely. I, I'm not saying it in a negative way. For me, it is more of a, I think it's, it's something that India needs to live by today because there's, we just don't have any other option. Okay, this is a, uh, has he lost the mandate of heaven? You know, when sir, before have you it? say, you know, there, there's, there's a rumor fl floating around and there is, there is a, of course, a, a Chinese format that I can't translate for the life of me. I wish I could, but which talks about some movement in that direction in terms of, uh, and this discussion has started up amongst the, uh, the Chinese dissidents, especially online, where they talk about some sort of a truncation in his power. It, nobody's saying that he will be moved out, but people do say that there will be some truncation with his, his power. Do you see that happening? See, my first thing is, when did he get the mandate of heaven? <laughs> he gave it to himself, <laughs> sir. I mean, he gave it on. to himself. He's uh, easing things, so, sir. He's, he's not God, yeah. So, they <laughs> uh, They call China the Middle Kingdom. I call it the Trishanku Swarg. So, I, I couldn't care a damn what happens to this fellow. As far as I, I'm interested, 
I hope he continues. Because he, like we discussed last time, he'll continue to destroy China and its economy <laughs> and make India strong. I, guys, I was so, about to say that, you know, we've done a video on this and the crux of that video at the end of it, after about an hour, 15 minutes, we came up to realize the fact that the leaders in Pakistan and the leaders in China are India's best friends. So let them be. Don't pray for their going because what they're doing to their countries is something that we can't. <laughs> we can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> we can put I all agree. the force that we've got. We have a 50 lakh army. We'll still not be able to do it. And we have a two-man army who's doing it for themselves. <laughs> so let's just let it yeah, be. Yeah. And as I think one thing that you very importantly said, and there's a good old saying I'd like to quote, which says that the best way of getting revenge is living better. So we need to look inward to get our act straight and whatever is going to happen to China will happen. I mean, at the end, at the end Let of it the happen. Why I couldn't care. It. Absolutely. Uh, okay, China has been, uh, been through much worse with the great leap forward. Uh, it's a statement of fact. So they are preparing for another great leap forward. See, my point is this. How does it matter what happens to China? What happens to India matters to me. And what is going to happen to India matters to me. Why are we doing all this business about China? To get the Indian view, the Indian perspective, what India should do to... Right? And given the history of our equations with China. So from my side, whatever is happening in China has great lessons for me. It tells me what not to do. And it also tells me how to go about my business. It's a different thing that our politicians have not been able to give you give all of us the direction, despite many of us talking sense. Okay, I hope they get to see it. I hope so too, sir. Yeah. For all our sake, as a matter of fact. Let's move on. What are the lessons for India where we can learn from China with regards to how to handle slash have policy for water management and infrastructure so that much of our water can be utilized and will not go into the sea? It's a very, very fair question. Very good question. Yeah. Uh, you know, very uh, interestingly, uh, I'm going to give a Pakistani solution to this. Which Pakistani pa Pakistanis have not uh, taken. The World Bank... Uh, I think about 10-15 years back, did a study on Indus and the water management system of Pakistan. And they charted out a plan for Pakistan, what Pakistan should do. Okay, of course, Pakistan has done nothing because it doesn't have money to invest in those plans. That plans need investment. The kind of uh, solutions which World Bank has given to Pakistan are phenomenal. Phenomenal. We need to uh, take them on. But having said that, there are a few things which we need to do. You need to have a um, good plan of water, uh, groundwater recharging. You need to uh, recharge your aquifers. Okay. And most of our aquifers in our country are generally identified in each area. But have we been approaching it uh, technologically and intelligently? I don't think so. Right? We've been approaching it politically. That's one. Second, this business of check dams, right, uh, is a very useful phenomenon uh, where you can create check dams with local uh, you know resources uh, if you see uh, this place called Ralegaon Siddhi in uh, Maharashtra apna who's that gentleman uh, ex army chap who was with Arvind Kejriwal also ah uh, the old guy I'm sure Guys, if you remember, I think there's a... Yeah, there's a I'm forgetting his name. name is missing. Yeah. Ralegaon Siddhi was Anna, a, in a drought Anna prone... Anna Hazare, thanks. Anna, Anna Hazare, yeah. And was in a drought prone area without water. If you go to Ralegaon Siddhi today, it is greenery all around. And yeah. people have grown rich. 
by water harnessing. They have done small things. Okay. Uh, the one major big ticket thing which we need to do is Indus Water Treaty. The Indus Water Treaty allows you to transfer water from the northern rivers to the southern rivers, uh, which are runoff water. Or in any case, the southern waters are yours. The southern three river waters are yours. And most of this water goes into Pakistan. Absolutely, yes. If you transfer this inter-basin uh, transfer and get the water from the uh, Indus Basin into the Gangetic Basin, okay, your job is done. And Indus Water Treaty, if you operationalize, so that means you need water from Chenab to Ravi to Jhelum. Uh, I mean, uh, Jhelum is in north. Chenab is also difficult to get water, but you can. So from Chenab to Ravi to Satlaj, if you link these three rivers, you have surplus water. But what do you do with that surplus water? The Indira Gandhi Canal, which goes down to Rajasthan, has enough water. So the water has to go from that old Satlaj Yamuna link canal. That means you transfer from Satlaj to Yamuna. That is from the Indus Basin to the Gangetic Basin. But that is mired in political uh, controversy. Yeah. So that Satlaj Yamuna link canal, the water, even the land has been given back by Punjab to their farmers. Right. The day you do that, you will be water sufficient. Because the Gangetic Plain does, has little less water these days. And if you're going to get that surplus water, and it will benefit Punjab also, it will benefit Haryana also, it will benefit UP also, and maybe even uh, NP. But NP has got no problem of water because uh, it's there. Uh, so these are the things you can do. And then, of course, this river linking scheme from north to south okay, uh, also has to be thought of, uh, which we have not thought of well. We don't. That's why I said it's not only a matter of getting Israeli a, a technology. Israeli technology is to manage the local cri uh, issues. But you need to have mega plants, which don't upset our ecology also. Yeah, that's the main thing, sir. Okay, and they, they are sustainable. For example, you look at the Indira Gandhi Canal. It's been a sustainable effort. effort. You see the Sardar, uh, Narmada uh, project. Sardar Sarovar project. It's been a sustainable project. Yeah, there will be problems. I'm not uh, saying no, that you there will be no problems. We had this Narbada, Batshaw, Andolan, and XYZ. There will be these things, and we need to get them over uh, within the constitution, uh, right? Inclusively. Take everyone inclusively forward. Yeah, those problems will be there, and we need to do that. But the larger issues we have to attend to. How long can the Chinese economy survive the adventures of Z? We're all trying to find that out. Uh, <laughs> I agree, but look, let me let me put things in perspective also. The macro picture is Chinese economy won't collapse overnight. Won't happen. It'll it'll get slowly decline over you know over a period of time. They got a to trillion dollars worth of forex. See, it's right? a, a forget trillion dollar growth of forex. That's not an issue to me. The point is that there are 1.3 billion people. Yeah, yeah. And you can't wish away 1.3 billion hardworking Chinese. The Chinese at the base are hardworking. They've been conned by the communists into behaving like idiots. That's a different story. Maybe it's there by their choice also. We don't know. Uh, so they'll work. They work hard. And you've seen that the growth in China has been good. You don't grow to this kind of uh, economy mm -hmm. without working mm -hmm. hard, without a plan and all that. It's a different thing. Why it is failing, it's a different story. Okay. But scope is there to do well. Right? So a, a collapse won't happen. A decline will happen. Indeed. Can the Chinese take control of the Brahmaputra water in this crisis? Uh, you know, yeah, this is not, look again. Uh, I we did a uh, we did a thing on Brahmaputra waters, Adi. Oh, no, sir. I just did a talk with General uh, Kamath. Okay, now I'll put it this way. I've done a talk with the 
uh, on P Guru's channel with Mr. Sri Iyer. And in fact, that it's not a discussion as much as a video, uh, uh, a slide, a PowerPoint presentation uh, with facts and figures and slides. Just take it out, okay, uh, and have a look at it. Um, you'll see. You see, the main thing about the Brahmaputra water is that 70% of the Brahmaputra waters comes from the Himalayan crest line on our side of the our side border. Of the yeah. It doesn't from there. There's only one channel which flows in from China. That's the Yarlung Sangpo from there, and it at Kepangla. There's a place called Kepangla which it falls. The Kepangla oh, Falls are something fantastic to see. It falls into in the, it enters uh, from Tibet to Arunachal in Kepangla, and it falls and becomes Dibang, and thereafter it is uh, Brahmaputra down south. Uh, the waters of the Brahmaputra come from Lohit, Siang, Siom. Dibang, Dehang, all Dalai, there are about eight, nine streams which come in. And they, they all have a lot of vol volume of water. And they all come from the Himalayan crest line and they're all on our side of the border. So, much against what people say that, you know, by br damming Brahmaputra that we'll lose water, we might end up being better off. Okay. We might end up being better off. So, but it needs a study in deep depth, mm. which I don't know whether people are doing. People are talking more out of emotional issues. And uh, so that is what I have to, this is my view on it. Okay. There's a bit of a challenge to what we had said, sir, which says, yeah. hope someone besides me in the government is listening. Uh, some strong views, but do we disregard the WTO and globalization? Are we in? in an interconnected world or are we like Myanmar? Let's not get emotional. I'm not getting emotional. I, I'm okay with this kind of a answer. But the fact is that WTO and globalization itself on the rocks. <laughs> it's being flouted every second day for every Absolutely. this thing and no one's bothered about it. Absolutely. Okay. We are globalized. The communications are, you know, we are in a globalized world. We still have to do give and take everything. Absolutely. But the fact is that you have to be on your own and there's no two ways about that. And if China is protectionist on its own side and, uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, the countries which are going to go under recession are going to become protectionist and they will become protectionist. They're already becoming protectionist. Yeah. If they're going to become protectionist, globalization anyway is taking a backseat. Absolutely. Okay. So, let's live in a real world. The real world is globalization is dying. WTO has got lost its meaning. You, you people don't even bother to look at WTO today. As a matter of fact, what's happening in Europe, which is basically a rebellion to the entire yeah. so-called yeah. global world rules order, or whatever they, they like to call it. And you'll really find this entire phenomenon going into the dust because at the end of it, this whole over-emotional reaction that has happened to the Russians and everything like that is causing this entire thing. Yeah. So the globalization is done. It, it's a it's a past concept, if I may. Anyways, uh, yeah, you will have you will remain interconnected. You will yeah. remain uh, regionally globalized, and uh, we will also be globally regionalized. So let's not forget that. Okay. This is a nice, interesting one. Imran Khan is certainly India's best friend and Xi Jinping's... Yeah, yeah, the, we did that. Thanks, Mandar. I agree with you completely. Right. And uh, Xi Jinping yeah. is the best thing that has happened to India in the past 200 years. I <laughs> agree. Completely. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Is semiconductor manufacturing high purified water is required? Is it sustainable for India? Yeah, you can. If you don't need uh, so much and... Uh, you have that much available in India, you, you can do it. For what we need, we, we have this capability. So You go to the mountains, you go to places along the Nile Greece, there's enough uh, pure water available. Absolutely. And the last comment or last comment of the day, uh, we will take as recently scientists found out some diseases related to wheat crop in India. Not sure if it's genuine or manufactured. We need to be careful about self, self-sufficient and other biological warfare and cro crops. I agree. There's no doubt about it. But I think our agriculture has come of age. 
gone are the days when our agricultural system uh, can be, could have been uh, taken for a ride uh, see there was a time when we were dependent largely on uh, you know foreign seeds and all that we, we have reduced it to a large extent and we made some great strides strides in uh, agriculture so, and it's based on fundamental research fundamental technology which we have developed based on our systems yeah we are still short of many things i am not saying that we are super far in agriculture but the days where you know this could have been waged is gone so i think we have crossed an hour and 5 uh, yeah. we will we'll stop it for now today uh, there are couple of else but you know it's it's a it's an ongoing subject and i think all of us will keep on bringing more and more thoughts to this entire thing it's something that yeah, i think, I think so we'll take it on with, maybe next week again we'll take on more questions. but having said that sir uh water and what we've discussed today as a matter of fact is going to be one of the talking talking points in china for the next time to come this is not a situation that is just going to be resolved by a lockdown or a you know fake chinese vaccine on that aspect it's going to take some time for the chinese to get, get down and do something about it uh it's going to be an interesting watch and we at dev talks will be sure to keep you updated with regards to you know any particular developments by the way there's a whatsapp group called uh, dev talks by adi so if any if you want to join in uh i've i've shared my email address which is there on the youtube page you can just you know drop me a mail i'll be glad to add you into the account there's some very interesting uh commentary which goes on in that the whole day exchange of ideas it's it's really nice to actually have that So thank you so much for joining in to all the viewers thank you so much for joining in before you log off hit the like button check your subscription and yes if you can contribute towards the dev dev talks efforts and uh, towards this whole game please do so with the options which are available below your screen thank you sir till next time for another session jai hind jai hind and good night